and welcome back. I want to give you guys an update regarding foreclosures as well as mortgage delinquencies in the US. This is because there was two new reports that was just published from CoreLogic as well as Black Knight. So let's go ahead and dive right in. I have a lot to share. First report I want to share with you guys is from CoreLogic that was just published uh, today at the time of this video, which is the 27th of December. This report right here is called their Loan Performance Insight Report, looking at mortgage delinquencies across the United States as well as foreclosures here. Uh, this report is published on a monthly basis and they actually looked at uh, on a national level, statewide level, as well as a citywide level in the US right now. And by the way, stay tuned because of course I'm going to be sharing how each of the states fared because there's some very big differences and also by the metro area here as well. But first on a national level here, uh, the average delinquency rate in the US, again, these are only for mortgages, is at 2.8% for October 2022. One year ago, it was 3.8%. So um, overall delinquency rates for mortgages have decreased about one percentage point compared to one year ago. According to the principal economist for CoreLogic, she had this to say, the share of loans in early stage delinquency increased slightly in October, led by Florida, which began to see the effects of Hurricane Ian. By the way, Hurricane Ian uh, hit landfall in Florida in late September of this year, of course. Uh, the Punta Gorda and Cape Coral metro areas on Florida's Gulf Coast saw early stage mortgage delinquencies triple. So um, mortgage delinquencies in um, Punta Gorda as well as Cape Coral, Florida uh, tripled compared to one year ago. Here's also a look at some select states that CoreLogic looked at uh, for um, overall uh, delinquency rates um, as of October 2022 compared to 2021 or October 2021. So Mississippi had a 5.3% uh, rate of delinquencies. Again, on a national level, it's 2.8%. So well below, above uh, the national level at 2.8%. Um, also above the national uh, averages here were, were Louisiana at 5.2%, West Virginia at 4.2%, New York, Alabama, as well as Oklahoma. So all above the nation's averages here. But it's also important to note that every single one of these states here are recorded decreases in delinquencies compared to one year ago. The biggest decrease was in Louisiana, uh, decreasing by 2.8 percentage points from October of 2021. So in other words, in Louisiana for October, the rate was 5.2%. One year ago, it was 8%. Here's something I found to be uh, very interesting as well, because they actually looked at different buckets of being late on your mortgage um, and also compared that to one year ago. So the dark green bars is October 2022 and the light green bars is one year ago back in 2021. So overall, when looking at mortgages of at least 30 days or more past due, again, the national rate is a 2.8%. One year ago is 3.8%. But not a whole lot of movement um, for each of these buckets here because uh, for each of these buckets right here, the rate was more or less the same compared to uh, October 2021. Uh, the only uh, kind of more significant uh, decline here was actually for 120 days past due. Uh, one year ago, that rate was 1.8%, whereas it was uh, where it decreased to 1% uh, this year, this October. Also for the number of houses in foreclosure, uh, one year ago, the ratio there was 0.2%. So out of all the mortgages out there, only 0.2% are in foreclosure. And fast forward to today, or at least fast forward to October 2022, the rate of foreclosure was only 0.3%. And CoreLogic had this to say, the number of borrowers who are at least 30 days or more past due on their mortgage payments actually remained at 2.8% nationwide for the third straight month in a row. Uh, as of October. This is still near the lowest delinquency rates we've been seeing over the past two decades. On top of that, the US foreclosure rate also hovered near an all-time record low, holding at 0.3% for the eighth consecutive month. So this 0.3% rate we're seeing right now uh, has been flat for eight consecutive months. In addition, all states saw at least a small year-over-year -year decline in overall mortgage delinquency rates. In other words, every single state recorded a decrease in the overall mortgage delinquency rate. However, though, six metro areas in the US posted annual upticks in delinquency rates or increases in delinquency rates was obviously not a good sign. Uh, these include two metros in Florida's Gulf Coast, uh, close to where Hurricane uh, Ian made land landfall in late September. 
causing an estimated $28 billion to $47 billion in property damage throughout the state. So obviously it makes sense that two of these six metros that posted increases in their overall delinquency rates uh, were actually recorded in Florida due to Hurricane Ian. CourtLogic also looked at the overall delinquency rates by state as well. Uh, and that's, that's defined by at least 30 days or more past due. That's what they define as an overall uh, delinquency rate here. So for October 2022, all states logged year-over-year -year declines in their rates. The states with the largest declines were actually in Louisiana, uh, declining by 2.8 percentage points compared to one year ago. New Jersey and also in New York both fell by 1.6 percentage points. So here's the state as a whole, of course. Louisiana falling the most by uh, 2.8 percentage points. And also we saw uh, bigger declines also in Alaska, Hawaii, Nevada, Texas, Oklahoma, and also some uh, southern states as well, and New York, of course, as well. In stark contrast, though, all these other states in, in gray right here uh, recorded decreases of less than 1% on a year-over-year -year basis. So in other words, as a nation as a whole, Louisiana recorded the biggest decrease in uh, delinquency rates uh, in the U.S., uh, down by 2.8 percentage points. Um, also, they also looked at um, uh, serious delinquency rates, which are defined as 90 days or more uh, past due on your mortgage payment. And no metro area recorded an increase in their serious delinquency rates compared to one year ago. So every, every single metro was at least flat or decreased compared to one year ago regarding serious delinquency rates of at least 90 days or more past due. Uh, also, there was 384 metros uh, that actually recorded a decrease in that rate. So that's what happened in October, according to uh, CoreLogic, which is just published today here. Let's also have a look at Black Knight for November because they actually posted this on December 22nd here. So again, according to CoreLogic for October, the national delinquency rate for mortgages was 2.8%. However, according to Black Knight here, uh, the national delinquency rate uh, increase another 3.5% in November to 3.01%. So for November, the national delinquency rate, according to Black Knight, was 3.01%. This is actually a 10 basis point increase compared to October of this year. So from October through November of this year, uh, overall rates increased by 10 basis points. And this was driven by a 31,000 increase in 30-day delinquencies. In other words, uh, delinquency rates of 30 days or more past due increased by 31,000 on a month-over-month -month basis. Uh, this is also driven by a 25,000 rise in 60-day delinquencies. They also touch on Florida as well because they say here the rate in Florida rose another 18 basis points for the month of November to 3.60%. I'll see higher than the national rate at 3.01%. It says here, of course, as the impact of Hurricane Ian on homeowners' ability to make mortgage payments continues. In regards to foreclosures, here's what Black Knight had to say, because foreclosure starts rose again by 19% compared to October. But this month's 23,400 foreclosure starts are still below the recent high seen in June of 2022 and remain 30% below pre-pandemic levels. Meanwhile, active foreclosure inventory, in other words, the total number of houses in foreclosure in the U.S. right now rose 5.3% compared to October, though 2022 volumes still remain very, very low or near historical lows uh, due to widespread moratoriums and forbearance protections that we saw in 2020 through 2021. And also a friendly reminder from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, uh, you can get into a new forbearance program here because the forbearance program or the loan forbearance program is still intact as of today. So for example, if your loan is backed by um, HUD, FHA, USDA, or VA, you may request an initial COVID-19 hardship forbearance as long as the COVID-19 national emergency is in place. And in fact, this national emergency is still in place right now. So if you have a loan that's backed by FHA, USDA, or VA, and you have not requested an initial COVID forbearance uh, program, you can still request uh, one as of today. On top of that, if your loan is backed by Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, there still is no deadline to request an initial forbearance. So my advice for you guys, if you guys fall behind on your mortgage payment or you have some sort of um, financial hardship, 
in which it makes it very difficult to make your mortgage payment, then definitely reach out to your loan servicer to discuss options. I mentioned this once again because I believe a lot of people believe that uh, loan forbearance has expired a long, long time ago. But based on this uh, from the uh, government website here, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, you still can request an initial forbearance program. And here's a snapshot looking at foreclosures in the US according to Black Knight for November. So the uh, US loan or actually a mortgage loan delinquency rate is at 3.01% for November. This is actually a 16% decrease compared to November of 2021. These are loans at least 30 days or more past due. And meanwhile, there's 23,400 foreclosure starts as of November this year, and that's an increase of 532% compared to one year ago when we had a federal moratoriums in place which is all see uh, makes sense. We saw this huge increase in, uh, or at least percentage wise, in foreclosures compared to one year ago, given the fact that more terms were in place approximately one year ago. Also, when looking at the number of houses that are at least 90 days or more past due, but not yet in foreclosure, there's only 550,000. That's actually a decrease of 476,000 compared to uh, November of 2021. Block Knight also shared the top five states that have the highest rates of overall mortgage delinquencies here. So Mississippi led the nation at 6.70%, followed by Louisiana at 6.08%, then Oklahoma at 5%, Alabama at 4.76%, and West Virginia running out the top five at 4.66%. Also, when looking at these rates here for November 2022, they're not too far off the all-time record lows uh, that were set right here. In more or less uh, March 2020 for Mississippi, but also for May of 2022 for all these other states here. Very close to the all-time record lows we saw back in May of this year. In contrast, here the states had the lowest rates of mortgage delinquencies here. The lowest rate was actually in Washington. The rate was at 1.69%. I'll see much lower than Mississippi at 6.7%. That was followed by Idaho at 1.79%, California at 1.9%, Colorado at 1.90%, and Oregon just over 2%. And again, looking at these rates right now compared to the all-time record lows, we're actually very, very close to all-time record lows. Uh, so for example, in California, uh, the rate right now at 1.90% is very close to December 2004 when the rate was 1.53%. Also, these rates here are well below the peaks we saw back in 2010 uh, as well because look at this, Oregon 9.20% was the all-time record high. Now it's only 2%. In California, the all-time record high was set in February 2010 at just under 16%, and now it's just 1.90%. They also listed the top five states that have the highest rates of mortgages at least 90 days or more past due. Uh, Mississippi led the nation again at 2.32% uh, right now. That was followed by Louisiana, Alabama, Arkansas, and then Oklahoma. And again, these levels right now for November 2022 are well below the all-time record highs for each of these states. And with that said, please comment below with your biggest takeaways from today's video. Also, if you guys got any values video whatsoever, then please hit the like button. I greatly appreciate that. And of course, I appreciate you. Hope you guys have an awesome day. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.